In this second part of the Introduction to Monetary Policy online lesson, we're going to be focusing on interest rates. So an interest rate is the reward for saving or the cost of borrowing expressed as a percentage of the money saved or the money borrowed. But we need to be very, very careful. There aren't there isn't just one interest rate in the economy. There are lots and lots of different types and different rates of interest available in an economy. So let's take interest rates on savings in banks and other accounts. A site account is just the same as a current account. So many of you may have current accounts. It's just a normal account that you have your debit card for. Now, because you can take your savings out very, very quickly, site accounts have very low interest rates because the bank hasn't got much time to prepare, if any at all, if you just rock up and take out your savings. Longer term savings accounts, so 30 day, 90 day, three month, if you want to take your money out, then the bank needs notice 90 days or whatever, and therefore they've got a little bit more security and so can offer you a slightly higher interest rates. Borrowing rates tend to be a bit higher than savings rates. So the firm, the bank or the financial institution will charge you more to borrow money than it gives you on your savings. Borrowing rates typically include mortgage interest rates. Now, these tend to be very low because, of course, the bank or the financial institution holds the deeds to your property. In other words, owns, formally owns your property until you finish paying back your mortgage. And because if you default on your mortgage, i.e. you don't pay your interest rates for a few months, they own the house, they can throw you out sell your house, take what you owe them, and then give you what's left over. So they have very low interest rates. Credit cards tend to be much, much higher interest rates because you tend to use a credit card when you've run out of money and you, you haven't got cash. So you need to use your credit card at the towards the end of the month. And therefore, they can um, raise the rates because it's interest inelastic. Very much the same with payday loans. Often they're very, very high interest rates. There's also interest rates on government and corporate bonds, which again are likely to be a little bit lower because they're more secure. So the Bank of England uses policy interest rates. Remember, we spoke in the last video about the bank rate to help regulate the economy and meet the macroeconomic objectives. Here is a graph showing monetary policy um, committee's bank rate since 2004. So we can immediately see over the period 2004 to 2008, monetary policy was much more active. It was changing interest rates in response to what was going on in the economy. In 2008, was the start of the global financial crisis. Interest rates dropped from 5% to 0.5% and have pretty much remained very low ever since. So you might start to think, hmm, are interest rates as active as they used to be? Are they as effective as they used to be? Does monetary policy using interest rates really count as a viable macroeconomic policy? because they're pretty low. And during the recent coronavirus, they dropped from 0.75% down to 0.1%. We have a quantitative skills question for you. What is the percentage change in the bank rate between points A and B? If you pause the video, have a little go at that and then restart the video in a moment. OK, so the original rate was 5%. The new rate is 0.5%. So the percentage change is actually a 90% fall, minus 90%. Please be aware that we have a common error here. A lot of students might have said, actually, it was a 4.5% fall. That is not true. It was a 4.5 percentage point fall using percentage points as the unit of measure. But it wasn't a 4.5% fall, it was a 90% fall. 
OK, there are many different interest rates available in the economy. Some of these we've talked about a little bit before. What we're going to ask you to do in your own time and in your own research is to see if you can find out what the latest rates are for each of these options. And just to give you a little bit of context and just to give you a little bit more of knowledge to write about in your exam, see if you can find out those interest rates. Here is some information about different interest rates over time. We can very much see that the bank rate, um, the instant access savings account, the very lowest, is very low indeed because, of course, you can take your money out straight away. Another interesting one is the second from bottom blue, which is the variable rate mortgage. Again, very low interest rates because the bank owns your house. Quantitative skills question. First of all, describe the data. And secondly, explain the data. Now, these are two very, very different questions. The first one, describe the data, would be as if you were telling somebody about this graph who can't see this graph. Imagine you were on the radio as an economics journalist and you were trying to describe what was going on with the, with the actual data. The second point, is you're actually explaining the data. Describing the data, so we're looking for the highest rates. We're looking for the lowest rates. We're looking for trends overall. And then we're looking for some kind of perspective. So the highest rates for credit cards and overdrafts are around four times as high as any other interest rate and have been rising throughout 2019 and early 2020. Perhaps we're interested in the biggest decline or which rates are similar. Explaining the data is very different. So borrowing on credit cards and overdrafts is riskier, often an indication that people are resorting to borrowing this way because they can't borrow through regular channels. So in other words, you're using your credit card towards the end of the month or you have to go into overdraft because your money's run out. Therefore, it's riskier that you might not pay it back. Therefore, they charge you a higher interest rate. Unsecured loans um, might have fallen during uh, due to competition in the market. This is because we've had more banks enter the market and more financial institutions enter the market, plus an increase in things like crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer lending. And with that increased competition, the unsecured loan rates have fallen in interest rates. The real rate of interest is very important to businesses and consumers when we make our decisions. And equally, the real rate of return on savings is the money rate of interest minus the rate of inflation. So let's take an example. A saver is receiving a money rate of interest of 6%, but inflation is running at 3%. Therefore, the real return the real rate of return on these savings is only 3%. Real interest rates become negative if when the nominal rate of interest is less than the rate of inflation. So a really good example to make this clear is if inflation is running at 5% and nominal interest rates are 4%, the real cost of borrowing money is negative at minus 1%. So in other words, it's worth borrowing the money because you'll end up paying less back than you actually borrowed in the first place because inflation is eating away at your initial borrowing amount. Price deflation can lead to an increase in real interest rates. So what does the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee consider when setting policy interest rates when they meet each month or more often during times of crisis? So they set the policy interest rate consistent with the need to meet the inflation target of consumer price inflation of 2%. So they have a two day meeting early each month and they consider all these factors. 
So for example, spare capacity, output gaps, retail sales, what's happening with share prices, what's happening with market prices, what's happening to unemployment, productivity, surveys on labour shortages, unemployment data, what's happening globally, what's happening in exchange markets, and what's happening with our trading partners. So it's a huge amount to consider. And of course, a lot of this is forecast, so it's not set in stone, which is why it takes them a day and a half to consider all this information.